And welcome, Pinal. How's it going? Good morning. I am very, very excited. Not as excited as I am. (laughs) Tara has been waiting for this. Tara has been waiting for this. Yeah, you are right. You are actually right. I was so excited for this. I, I do not know what I've been doing, but I am all over this, uh, all over this training thing. I'm so I cannot stop talking about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good. Well, it seems like if people are really receptive to it too. Your first date sold out. Now people oh, are working wow, on the second awesome. one. That's fantastic. What did, What did you okay. set as the, the limit? 25 um, for the first one. I said, you know, to pace yourself. Yeah. Don't try and go wild and crazy. <laughs> and I was like, 50 people. I'm like, hold on, wait. Just, yeah. you know. Yeah. But, but you promised me that second one, once it is sold out, we will increase, right? <laughs> of course. Yep, yep, absolutely. If you have 50, 75, whatever. Because the questions are usually pretty easy to handle. It's the first experience of doing a, you know, a four right. hour or whatever one. But yeah, you're totally No, good. no, I... I would put my best efforts. I've been talking about it. I've been sending regular emails. I see 30 people registered and I am yet not satisfied. As you probably <laughs> would say, uh, she knew me firsthand that 30 is not my number. I want more, but let's see. Yeah. You're like my, and I had told, so Pinal and I and my wife were all sitting around a table at SQL Bits and I'm like, look, 25 people is a lot for an online training. You should be ecstatic. He's like, no, 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 I want 100. I'm like, oh, okay. Because <laughs> so, every time uh, he's got a session, he's so popular. Right. So Richie would, um, I mean, Rich, uh, Richie, my goal is 100 people. That's what I would say. And I'm still short by 70. So my first <laughs> wave, I want 100 people. Any ideas? <laughs> He's out walking the streets. He's like, what can it take to take you to put into this uh, training class right here? <laughs> right. I was just talking to one of my customers and I was like, um, I, yeah, I, I even march, uh, marketed this one. And he was like, but you just taught us this one. I said, yeah, but you can revise this because we did not record it. And they started to laugh. So, uh, so well, plus, plus you can tell them they weren't that smart and they didn't learn it the first time. So. Oh, that's right, isn't it? I I don't know if I'll tell them, but um, I was just thinking, I'm still open for an idea. I just recorded my five minutes video a few minutes before. I think I'm gonna put it out next week as a marketing that why you want to attend this one. At least I want somehow uh, 100 people. Do you think it's doable? You know, it's so tough. I think after the first one, word will get out, you know, that the people right. will do reviews and whatever. But man, I didn't have 100 people my first, you know, classes going out but and doing the online stuff. your class must be stuff. expensive when you were just beginning. Now you set a <laughs> platform for me and uh, me, Kellen and everybody. And when Kellen wrote to me, I hope everybody's not listening this, right? Oh, yeah, everybody. It's totally live. This is going on the podcast, but you're totally it's OK. We've already put like Kalen's out on the webcast, too, I mean, is on the recording. But yeah, if it's private, don't say it up. But <laughs> no, 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 not private. When Kalen said she uh, is very happy and she followed um, uh, okay. that half. I mean, she online said that she's uh, also doing the webcast and she followed uh, right after me. I was pretty excited, actually. Yeah. I was like, wow. I mean, such a celebrities are. Um, uh, really uh, just looking at me and thinking, oh, yeah, we can do something like him. That just at, uh, validates my moves that I am been right. I My, my act has been right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, folks, feel free to get your questions in. You can go into the questions pane and go to webinar and ask whatever technical questions you want. Or blogging questions, too, as well, if you want, since we got Pinal here, who's like the uh, big, huge blogger in the SQL Server community. Pablo right. Fernandez says it's nice to see Pinal here. Michael Tilly says, yay, Pinal is here. JD says, hello, world. And our first question comes in from Tishal. Tishal says, I was preparing a report using data collected from Management Data Warehouse. I was using one of its tables, uh, snapshots, performance counter values, and it has some columns in it formatted as floats. Uh, feel free. He says, oh, how do you interpret the results of these columns for replication latency? Ooh. Well, I uh, I would say, so Tara, you've done a lot of replication work. When do you, when you want to find out how latent replication is, what do you use in order to do it? 
I usually just open up Replication Monitor and then I insert a tracer token. Replication Monitor will tell you what the latency is. You know, it's it's, it's an estimation. But if you insert a tracer token, it'll you'll watch it flow from the publisher to the distributor, and it'll tell you what that latency is, and the distributor subscriber and what that latency is. Um, so the tracer token is a really good way. Um, so some people do um, via code they insert tracer tokens and then they log that to a table and send out emails, but um, I forget what the script is to run to um, query it, but you know, you could run an extended event session to see what replication monitor is doing to grab that latency number anyway, and then, you know, mon monitor that via scripts instead of using the GUI. Yeah, use your own scripts to inject a token whenever you want. Uh, Pablo says, with a million row BI table, I'm trying to create a clustered index and I'm constantly running out of disk space. Will partitioning help? Pinal, what do you think? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Actually, I this reminds me of the time years ago when the disks were very, very expensive. I remember I had experienced this one and I, even though there was no really reason, I had to partition my table, but the partitioning was actually done just because of this error. So yes, partitioning would help, but it makes sense that you create the second partition on a different drive same drive you're going to walk in into the same problem different drives so now you need to do a partitioning partitioning functions as well as you need to go through this entire logic about which is the key and then you create this horizontal partitioning so yes partitioning would help but if this is not something you are looking for you may want to look at how you can get more space on a disk by changing the disk maybe in a long run that would be easier or um, yeah, any other thing like delete some stuff or move some of the database out of that uh, partition or do something like that, that would be more meaningful um, oh. instead of just doing partitioning for a sake of partitioning. And when you are creating the cluster index, the heart of your table. So that's my opinion. Yeah. So create partitioning if there is no option. Otherwise, just do what works. Actually, at the end of the day, your boss should say you are able to manage your database. That's what I say to Richie all the time. Richie, <laughs> you are able to manage your database. I was just not even an hour ago, I was telling Richie, Richie, I want to buy a bigger database server. He's like, nope. Nope. <laughs> it's not our problem, Brent. <laughs> but I Come want on. to. I want to try it. <laughs> I want to throw money at it. <laughs> JD asks, he wants to do, he says, is transactional replication the best way to copy data from a vendor app on server one to a different database on server two? It needs to be as close to real time as possible. How should I move data between those? What is with all the replication questions? It's because you're here, Tara. Because <laughs> you're here, yeah. I, I mean, best, I don't know. Are you using standard edition, enterprise edition? Because if I'm using enterprise edition, I'm not using transactional replication. Um, I'm going to be using availability groups and, you know, um, going to sync it over there. But it just depends on what, what, what you're trying trying to do here. Um, all of the technologies have some latency, um, you know, unless you're doing uh, synchronous through, you know, mirroring and availability oh, groups. He he follows up with he's on enterprise but it's 2008 ah, r2 he does yeah. say they might upgrade to 2017 soon mm. yeah so um transaction replication is a good tool to copy your data to another server but you have to be aware that there is going to be um, latency at times when big transactions run um and make sure your replication topology topology is you know to best practices you've got a publisher on one server, a distributor on another server, and your subscribers on another server. You know, don't put the distributor on um, the publisher or subscriber. I mean, you could if you've got the hardware for it, but best practice is, is to separate these guys. And you know, just know that it's replicating insert, update, and delete commands, and you know, updates get converted into an insert, into a delete and an insert. So it's at a very high level, and so there there can be some latency flowing through on that pipeline, whereas mirroring and you know, availability groups occur at a much lower level. Um, but yeah, the 2008 um, Enterprise Edition transaction transaction replication is a good feature. It's just I've spent so many hours troubleshooting it and you know waiting for a snapshot to run, waiting for the initialization to happen. I mean, wow, a lot of hours. Would you take if somebody offered you a new pr production DBA job and they said you can be a DBA but you have to work with reputation rep, or with uh, replication full time? What would you I don't say? Know. I guess it would, I, for, for me taking another job it depends upon benefits. I start there, and you know a lot of times I don't care how bad the job is if the uh, if the benefits are good. You know? But for me, you know, am I going to be on call and have have to work at three in the morning all the time? <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. I don't mind replication so much. You know, it, it was stable in my um, last environment and we didn't have to, you know, do too much with it. When it works, yes. It, when it works, exactly. That's the key. <laughs> so I've been on systems where it breaks. <laughs> exactly. So, so, so one thing I would just make a comment here is that lot you will find a lot of experts who can configure the replication, but the people who can just really troubleshoot the replication are, I think, there are only one percent. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. it's not easy task, and yeah. yeah, configuring, click, 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 go, done, yes. fine. But how do you fix it? And I've even you know opened up a case with Microsoft many years ago to um, I was getting a weird replication error and I knew that the snapshot and that whole process was going to take several hours and so I was hoping to fix replication rather than go through that process and you know, right. the, the things that they had me do to replication is not something that you find blogs about I mean so that you know I had to open this case with them and I don't remember what the outcome was if they fixed it or not because it was just way too many years ago but it was just crazy the you know the queries that I was running and they're like you know grab this grab that look at this look it's just like yeah. How are you supposed to know how to do this stuff? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Richie, you look like there's something you want to say there in there too. Um, I hate the Cubs. <laughs> what did they hate. lose? Hate. How what did is... did they lose? Who did oh, they lose they, to? They like they haven't scored a run in like two games. So. Oh, but that's what God. I wanted to say. You can always tell when baseball season starts with Richie, but he's very preoccupied. This is his one. Justin Setliff says, Richie, don't worry, it's early. <laughs> it looked like a blue screen of death flag for a second there. And that's what it feels like. <laughs> Nicholas asks, hi, gang. How can you prove that other processes and services like Apache or Internet information services on the same box are causing the SQL Server performance problems? I, I would never be able to prove it because I wouldn't allow those on my on my SQL servers. I mean, I just I, I need a production DBA here, and I just no, <laughs> you're not putting that stuff on my box. And why not? Because SQL Server is a memory hog, IIS is a memory hog. You know, they don't. I mean, they could be on the same box if you're talking about a very very small system. I guess. I mean, maybe in a test environment, but in production, I want to go by best practices and try to avoid having issues at three in the morning. <laughs> And one of the things I, I, I was just like yesterday, I was in a traveling into India and I was in Pune and my customer had an interesting scenario. They thought the reporting service is just fine and they have absolutely no issue and they put it on a same box of SQL server. And I was mm -hmm. like, OK, we, we just uh, try to debug why they have a lot of IO. We, uh, and we tried to start debugging with a various T-SQL script and suddenly they accidentally open a task manager and we can see from the task manager's native view that reporting service is taking their maximum amount of the memory. They were mm. like, I don't know why, what was going on? And we can see that it was taking 30% of their box's memory and we were like, whoa, I mean, we didn't even have to run any diagnostic script. The task manager was saying it. And as soon as we just decided to turn it off and kill it, and they had a little minor performance improvement, minor, and we believe after they might have restarted, it would have worked. So once in a while, the layman's or not so smart solution like task manager also tells a story. I mean, so we should we should definitely run all the fanciest script, but do not ignore the task manager. That's what I just uh, told my customer yesterday, and they thought, oh, do you tell this to everybody? I said all the time, though even I said first time yesterday, yes. <laughs> I, I too use task manager. I mean, sure, I know how to use other things also, but so easy, right? Click task manager and there it is. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it's everybody gets it, like that they understand this. We're not hiding something from you. It's built into the system. Yeah. Right. Nicholas says about uh, why he put things on multiple servers. He says sometimes you inherit things. Man, mm -hmm. you got to get better relatives so you don't have such crappy inheritance. <laughs> uh, Daryl says, I got an email from a vendor yesterday telling me that I should replicate to the cloud. I thought last week we were saying that we should not do replication. Thought that Bren Ozar Unlimited was saying not do replication. Um, well, generally, if a vendor is telling you to do something, they're usually also selling you a tool to do it at exactly the same time. So just think through about that one. I mean, what problem are they trying to solve here? That's what I want to know. Why are they saying to replicate to the cloud? What, what is the issue here? Is it disaster recovery? I mean, what, what is it? 
Is right. it to my so I'll, just tell you, I'll just add a point there because I think I know a little bit of context of this because I have seen the similar email and I a little bit read through mm. it. Uh, I don't know exactly situation of the Daryl, but I would just say this way. I think Quest is a product, uh, uh, I think, and that product is trying to talk about the hybrid uh, replication, which is not native to the SQL server. And they say you can go to Hydris as, as well as heterogeneous uh, environment and at that time always on is not a solution might be you may want to consider a replication so yeah replication is still true um, but in a replication not in terms of the sql server replication replication in terms of taking your data and creating a replica of it at a different location so maybe that's what they are meaning and the product might be able to solve the problem as brent clearly said and I'm a fan of putting data in the cloud too. Like if you want a reporting copy up there, because classically a lot of our users are out in the cloud or they're out somewhere else. And if your building's internet connection goes down and they still want to be able to run their reports, replicating up to the cloud can make sense. You just want to make sure that you're solving a problem that the business has. I just want to point out that uh, Tara's wearing a Quest. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, I think the, uh, my old camera would have been up to here. <laughs> it's just, it's cold in my house, and this is my favorite thing around the house. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Quest has, the Quest, uh, the velour kind of uh, whatever that thing is, that's mm -hmm. one of my favorite things that I keep yeah. over in the office as well. It's so soft. It is. Oh, yeah. If you ever get the chance to get, not a vendor t-shirt, because vendor t-shirts aren't that good, but if a vendor gives you something nice, like a hoodie or a sweatshirt, it's going to be really nice. Same yeah. thing with the jackets. They give good stuff. Out. Yeah, I have a uh, Azure hoodie that I got from the PDC where they announced Azure, where no one ah. could under to say Azure, Azure, <laughs> Azure. Azure, Azure. <laughs> yeah, I still have that, and I wear it all the time. Nicholas points out that when we were at Quest, we did uh, shirts. Cl Kevin Klein is divine was one of the mm. T-shirts, and that was really good. <laughs> Pablo says, I have uh, this third party application and it keeps creating lots of tables. And then when we run reports, it does a bunch of union alls that take forever. What should I do to help this application's performance? Everybody has the same look. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I just thought it's, I think they got us at the one word, which is called third party ape. As soon as you say it, like we just know what is it about. Oh, there are thousands of the things we can talk about. Union all is just one thing which you can see probably. And there are so many things like indexes, statistics, and query hints they are using inside the code. I'm sure there are so many views to support your, um, so you can't see what is written in the view which you can just have to open it encrypted store procedure comes handy when you don't want it so many things third party app could have it um but uh, i i mean this is the right place i can tell you there are three resources you can pay, uh, watch io memory and cpu uh, those are the three are going to be heavily consumed by this third party app no matter what you do so uh, whatever you can do at a database level application level without even touching the code should be your priority when you are dealing with a third party app because most of the third party app as soon as you try to touch something they somehow make sure they for any other things which is not even related they blame you for that. <laughs> True. So, yes. I mean, like dropping an index and uh, yeah, I, okay. Can I tell a quick story before I, I would like Brent in a team answer? Yeah. Yesterday, I advised one organization who were using a, a, a product and I said, why don't you drop some of the indexes? And just for trying, I said, let's check all entire your code base and see if anywhere you are using that index hint. Otherwise that would break. So they said, sure, they ran through the code base search. They couldn't find that index and they decided to drop that index and immediately there. One of the major screen broke. We figured it out. They are using now not even the index hint that way with the name of the index. They are using index hint with like in the parentheses one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I mean, they, oh. They, they, are, they are addressing the index, not with a hint name, not That's index name. They are addressing them with like that ID of the index, like four. So tomorrow oh, you recreate okay. that index. The fourth index would be something else. Think about what would be your performance. Third party app can do anything. 
That's the worst hint I think I could imagine is hint, specifying index hints by number. Because you have you say that somebody accidentally drops it, you don't even know what it was. What the oh, that's terrible. I've never even seen people do. That. I didn't even know that that no. was an option. Well, that is an number. option, and people practice it. And yeah. when I asked them, they said, "Why they do that?" And their answer was beautiful. Oh, we come from a different RDBMS experience, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Well, saying you are from that." Oracle or MySQL or Postgres does not make you any smarter. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. And you were they were probably bad in that database platform too. It's not an excuse. It's like being caught with you know a pile of drugs and saying, Oh, I'm from France. It doesn't it's illegal <laughs> in France too. Doesn't make it a right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Greg asks, how's the reception been for constant care? I'm on day one and I love what I see so far. It was Greg, it was funny to see you sign up too. Um, I think we broke past 300 servers. I know we're up past 100 users, and I think we're past 300 servers. Yep, something like that. Yeah, we're up over 150 terabytes of databases monitored. So it's been a lot of fun. It's been keeping me busier than a one-armed paper hanger trying to give advice to these people for a server. So it's been pretty funny. All right. I have one question for you because it's a V1. Uh, I re I've been reading myself, and this question is from me, actually, and I'm just uh, inserting because I get opportunity. And... Um, who writes all this thing? I mean, <laughs> it doesn't look automated. It, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> so it started with SP Blitz. So SP Blitz gives you all these warnings about your stuff. So I told right. Richie, here's what we want to build, and we're going to take the rules from SP Blitz. And that's like all the input he had from me, and he just boom, boom, took off. Right, the VMware suggestion, I mean, it blew my mind. I, I don't, I didn't know that. Just reading that email about VMware, I learned something. I was like, oh, I think a couple of my customers in the past, I never talked about this. They might be sure. facing this. They put a complete trust in me and might, I didn't know that part even. Now I just learned a second ago and uh, yeah. That, to me, I think that's one of the markets too that we're aiming for is consultants and independent freelancers. Because it's so nice to have a second opinion. Just tell me what's going on else that I might have missed. And so it's really good to get this list of, ooh, you forgot about this one rare issue. You know, it's one yes. rare, rare poison weight or whatever. So it's been a lot of fun with them. And, 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 and it's not lying. I mean, Brent's having get, a blast yes, doing all this stuff. And I know he is because he gets quiet. Sure. And I'm like, oh, oh, he's just having too much fun over there. And Richie right. can see all the customer emails that I send out too, like seeing out what the recommendations are. So he sees, you know, where I'm tweaking things from the system and how I go into details and it's fun. This is amazing because one of the things I'll tell you, because one place you have mentioned about CUs, it was mm -hmm. so nice to talk about CUs because I knew that one and I was so happy. A lot of people do not know. So if you install SQL Server 2016 SP1, right away and suddenly you will see your locks going crazy your locks are so many that you would be like what happened i didn't change my code everything was fine in a 2014 and as soon as you start updating the latest cu suddenly all the locks will disappear and there was resource semaphore and then we just had to create one index and resource semaphore gone but if somebody would have not updated the cu which the suggestion was there on a constant care and i was like I can clearly see if this guy has not done CU and four of the server was on a default, mm -hmm. I, he would be facing the locking scenario crazy, thinking they have a bad code, and that's not a case. It's just CU update you just had to do, and your life was all good after that. Yeah. And Amy, if you apply a bad CU, if you buy, apply a CU that breaks things, I want to be able to tell people very quickly. For sure. Yes, yes. Let's see, Mike asks, I've been getting errors. Oh my goodness. Mike says, I've been seeing SQL Server failed to spawn a thread to process a new login in the middle of the night. Should I add logging schedulers? He wants to start logging different DMVs, schedulers, workers, tasks every five minutes. Or what should I do? It's a brand new server with only one database. It's got two cores, eight gigs of RAM, and SQL Server Enterprise Edition. Well, why is this server so small when you're spending so much money on Enterprise Edition? <laughs> That's what I want to know yeah. right off the bat. Eight gigabytes of RAM. Ooh. Did you not have a Any spare desktop has a lot more. to run the <laughs> on? And the two cores thing is tricky too because the minimum core licensing for a VM is four cores. Now, if you're licensing by the host, you can license the whole host and then start small. But 
that's two cores of enterprise edition is fourteen thousand dollars i mean it's it's a big deal i'm not even familiar with that message i wonder is that a specific sql server message because that's that doesn't i mean i've i've looked at a lot of error messages in the past 20 years <laughs> or so that's not one of them i'm familiar with so i'm wondering if this is something an application error instead oh mike says it came from db mail oh. wait so now this really makes me suspicious of the number of messages you're processing in terms of DB mail. That seems sketchy. I don't, we should probably ask it around the question too. So my personal thought on DB mail is I don't want to use it to email customers directly. It's one of those things that I would use for administration type stuff, but I wouldn't want to try to make an app server out of it. It's okay. It just doesn't scale that well. Mike says it sends to DBAs. Yeah, it's not so bad. Yeah, so I could see that. I don't know that I would start by logging the MVs though. I'd start by looking at weight stats, look at weight stats overall and see what you're looking at then. Uh, because there are only two CPUs. So when you say CPUs, I, do you, I assume there are two processors, right? Then he two might cores. be running out of the threads during the night due to some, maybe some other operations. Maybe it might be conflicting with your other uh, maintenance jobs also possible. Just yeah. thinking because you said midnight. Yeah, so it's probably got 50 jobs all starting off at exactly midnight. I used to do that as a DBA. <laughs> like, oh, it's the middle of the night. Just set everything to midnight. And then you could see all the lights in the data center get dim right at exactly midnight. Yeah, it's right. like so four o'clock so constant when, care. So, right. <laughs> when somebody said midnight, that's the only thing comes to my mind because I don't know why when I was uh, a beginner at the 12 p.m. was like oh, the most uh, holiest time. 12 a.m. was the most holiest time to do pretty much everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Fire off the backup, fire off the index maintenance, and let them run in a Quest 22 situation. The server's totally idle from like 10 p.m. to midnight. There's nothing happening, and then it, <laughs> it's like an army of football players go running into the to the thing at the same time. It's at, right at exactly at midnight, and yeah, yeah. and they never finishes that. Yes. And just to give an extra hint, look for thread pool weights. And so what I would do to <clears throat> for, for cheap uh, monitoring, just log who is active to a table every 30 seconds, every minute. You know, you could do it all day long like, like I've done in the past. But if you just want to monitor for this specific issue, log that and then um, look for thread pool weights. Um, you should see in the weight info column, I believe it is. Um, look for blocking. Um, it, it, but it, it might not it might not be blocking. It might just be running out of worker threads because you only have two CPUs. I should also point out that if you search on Bing for log SP who is active log to table, you get some really pretty ads on the side there about side tables for with made of logs. Um, oh. Tara has <laughs> yeah, Tara has a, a blog post on uh, logging activity with SP who is active there. That's really good. Right. Oh, let's see. Next up, we have Stephen says I only have read access to a database, and I need to take the data out of that and sync it to another database that I have full control over. What way would you use to get that done? You're very limited. SSIS probably. I mean, you only have read access. You can't do replication. You can't add triggers. You can't do. You can't do anything. So you're gonna need some kind of process. Right, or just back up and restore and remove the read restriction. Just thinking, <laughs> just thinking loudly, even if, even if that is possible. Mm -hmm. And Rich used yeah. to do a lot of this kind of thing. Yeah, it, it, when he said sync, that's that's the the key word for me. It's like, well, what does that mean? Does that mean you you need to have? Hey, I've got one source of truth here, and I got the other in the other database, and I got to merge them together. Um, that is a lot more difficult than just saying, hey, I have an ID here and I just need to see if it exists or not in the other one. Um, so SSIS, I guess, um, if it's the easy one, if you need to merge them together, you're looking at a lot of, lot of work there. That's, that's, not, that's not simple. At least he said he only has read access to one of them, so it's probably not that, thank goodness, because that is terrible. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it said sync, you know, when I say sync, I don't think you know eh, that 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 yeah. kind of that gets me. I, I've I've spoken to too many executives, so that's my well, problem. and they always end up saying the same thing. We just need to get this one row back to the other side. Yeah. It's just yeah. one row. How hard can it be? Naveen asks, we have two processes running on SQL Server. One's doing an update, one's doing an insert. They both kick off at the same time, and they're getting blocked by each other. What should I do to reduce blocking timeouts? Who was the asker on this? I want to read it again. Naveen. 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 Okay. 
And okay. so for behind behind the scenes stuff for y'all, we can all see the same panel of questions, but so many of you pick out the questions. The reason why I read your name out, it's not because I care about you. I don't care about you at all, but I want the rest of my co-presenters to see which question we're dealing with. <laughs> but we would right. love to mentor you. Um, yes. <laughs> The update statement is timing out. That means it's not definite. I mean, it's just locked on that select or when both of them started a process. So one thing, if they're deadlocking or um, uh, or just locking. So, and it says after 30 seconds of blocking. So I, is it like an application thing? Maybe there is a timeout. If he just waits a little bit longer, might be finished. I'm just thinking it loudly. Like yeah. sometimes, you know, we give very short timeouts and things has to, and, and I, I tell everybody that locking is just all right. It's just all about waiting game. Once somebody mm -hmm. finishes it, second person is going to get a uh, turn, uh, but dead locking is bad. So SQL says that's the reason they're timing out it immediately. So when I see this one, I might just think that maybe you just can change the timing if possible, if you can do it. If that is not possible, see if one of the processes finishes fast. So you don't have to wait for 30 second timeout to kick in and if no matter what you do if 30 second timeout is still kicking in well one of the process is going to be finished one time or another time then i think another one has to wait so increase the timeout and if all of them is not an option then you just have to look at your comprehensive your database and see what are the uh, blockers are there and take from um, uh, who is active you can take it or you can take it as blade start seeing all the blockers and start removing one at a time yeah, I, I, I would just wonder because the, the update statement is the one that's timing out. So the insert one is the one that's causing the blocking. Is this a single row insert? Um, investigate that process. Is it a very large query that's getting inserted into a table? You know, investigate the insert and see if that can happen any faster. Is there any you know, indexes that can be added? I mean, if it's just a singleton insert, you know, oh my I doubt that that's the culprit here. He follows up with it's a, the insert's doing 20,000 rows. Okay, well, I mean, you know, so break, break, maybe break that up if it's, it can't complete in 30 seconds. So, you know, look at your processes and do things differently. I mean, is it a bulk insert, you know, or is this just, yeah, you know, bulk insert can be pretty fast. 20,000 rows isn't any big deal for bulk insert. One of the thing I would just, yeah, what Jara said is very, very true. One of the thing, one of the demonstration is my favorite demonstration. So pretty much all my presentation, I open with it, where I just show them that how a lot of indexes can slow down your, your inserts. And a lot of people, even they think, uh, uh, that it's a linear. So if you have one index, your system uh, is taking three seconds to update. If you create two index, uh, a lot of people say, oh, it will take six index to update. That's not the case. When you create one additional index, amount of the administrative tasks SQL Server has to do around that index update is way more than just doubling the time uh, mm -hmm. than your original update. So it's quite possible. Uh, a lot of people say this is very generic advice said, Disable, not disable, disabling one do good. Just remove all your indexes and recreate back. If that is something your ETL process has to do, but again, that's just a trade-off. So you save time now, and when you rebuild all the indexes, you are going to lose the same time. So end result, it's going to be the same thing. It's just what makes you happy. Let's see. Emily says she's been using a trigger to find out which login is logging in, like what users are logging in and what database they access. But when they log in, people usually seem to log into master. Is there a way that I can capture what queries people do in which databases? What are you trying to solve here? Because I mean, you're going to be adding some performance overhead if you start, if you, if you want to figure out what people are doing. Um, I mean, you could possibly set the default database to whatever database they should be in. That way they don't go to master first because um, yeah, they're going to end up in the right database with their queries since the applications are working. But if you switch the default database to whatever database they should be in, you might be able to have easier success with this. But I just wonder what you're trying to solve here. I mean, you're, you're obviously auditing and this is going to eventually cause performance issues. And it's hard when people do cross database queries too. You know, they'll, yeah, they'll join across five different uh, databases. Daryl says, oh, what? Because they can. Because yeah. they can. <laughs> yeah. And Union all, because they're third-party vendors. <laughs> Daryl says, I want to get my data off-site. Y'all have mentioned backups to the cloud. What options do I have to get my data off to the cloud that would get me protected quickly? And Tara wrote a white paper about this. <laughs> I like referring to, um, to that white paper with um, clients that don't have any disaster recovery in place and they're not willing or not able to currently spend any kind of money um, on a disaster recovery solution. So I'm like, well, how about just this cheap solution where you just send your backups to a storage bucket somewhere in the cloud 
Um, and then you at least have that. I mean, obviously you're gonna need to send your source code. You can't just have a database without an application, you know? Um, so you at least get that stuff out there. That way if the primary site ever goes down, you could spin up servers in the cloud and then restore everything after that. It's not gonna be easy. It's certainly not gonna be easy. From the database perspective, it's fairly easy. You know, the white paper covers all the steps that need, need to happen, but you know, getting your whole environment um, up and running up there is gonna be very, very, very painful, but at least you're not toast completely. And it's practically free too. It's really cheap to get the log shipping going up there. And then the last one we'll do, JD says, I'm sorry for another replication question. <laughs> He says, we have indexed views on our replicated database, but because they require schema binding, we're using pre and post replication scripts to drop and create the views and indexes. Is this a bad idea? I don't necessarily know if it's a bad idea or not. It, it, it sounds like it's working for you. So how can it really be a good idea if it's working for you? Um, I, I have not used index views with in conjunction with replication, but I have had to use uh, post scripts for replication where um, our source schema in the publisher was going to be different than the subscriber. Um, so in the replication store procedures, we changed those um, inserts and update, uh, just, I think it was just the insert and update store procedures to modify the, the schema um, and that worked fine for us. So if it's working for you, it's a bad idea. I, I've never heard that it's a bad idea, but I don't know that many people are using replication in conjunction with index views. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, everybody, for hanging out with us this week. Thanks, Pinal, for joining us and look forward to seeing people in your training class uh, coming up on June as well. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty excited. So, yeah, we, as, I, as we discussed, as we started to discuss, there are a few signups and I'm looking for a few more people to join us with us because mm -hmm. I can promise you it's going to be fun and a lot of interesting demonstration. And most important thing, what I'm looking at is the module three where cheating is allowed. Ah. And I want to see it. I want to see how people cheat with each other and come up with the wrong answer. So <laughs> that's going to be fun. If you come up with the right answer, bravo. But most probably, I'm going to win there. So person who get the most number of the wrong answer, you are going to be winner that day. <laughs> nice. We'll see everybody next week in office hours. Adios, everybody. <laughs>